It's a pleasure to have you join us on the newsroom. I am Sinisola Adikun. The National Union of Electricity Employees has suspended its nationwide strike action for two weeks. The union made the decision on Wednesday after a meeting with Chris Ngige, the Minister of Labor and Employment. Electricity workers had planned to embark on a nationwide strike to protest the non-payment of outstanding arrears owed to former workers of the defunct power holding company of Nigeria, PHCN, the suspension of conditions of service, career path for workers, amongst others. Confirming the recent development and the outcome of the meeting, the President Association of Senior Staff, Electricity and Allied Workers, Chika Ben, said power supply will be restored immediately. The Nigeria Governors Forum, NGF, has criticized the Minister of Justice and Attorney General of the Federation, Abubakar Malami, describing his recent claims and actions as fraudulent and self-serving over the $418 million per club refund. The chairman of the group, Kayode Fayemi, told the media after a meeting on Wednesday that the forum will take every constitutional and legal means to ensure that the purported consultancies are fully litigated by the Supreme Court. The NGF chairman insisted that there is no liability by the state and only the courts can determine if the NGF states are indeed liable, adding that Balami is acting in his personal and public interest. The Commissioner of Police in Lagos State, Abiodun Alabi, has announced that there will be there was partial lockdown of the state by security agencies due to the threat of attacks by unknown gunmen. Alabi disclosed this in Lagos during the Lagos State Stakeholders Forum on Police Accountability Quarterly Meeting and Awards. The Lagos Police Force, who said that though the number of police personnel in the state were inadequate, added that with community and police partnership, the current number could tackle all crimes and criminality. The head of the top public health agency in the United States on Wednesday announced a shakeup of the organization, saying it fell short while responding to COVID-19 and needs to become more nimble. The planned changes at the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention comes amid criticism of the agency's response to COVID-19, monkeypox, and other public health threats. The changes include internal staffing moves and steps to speed up data releases. Emirates Airlines has said it will suspend its flight operations to Nigeria from September 1, 2022. The flag carrier of the United Arab Emirates, UAE, disclosed this in a statement, blaming its decision on the inability to repatriate its earnings in foreign exchange from Nigeria. In a letter addressed to the minister and signed by Emirates Airlines Divisional Senior Vice President International Affairs, Sheikh Majid Al Muala, the planned reductions in its operations in Nigeria will take effect from August 15, 2022. It added that flights will be reduced from 11 per week to 7 per week at the Muritela Mohammed International Airport, Lagos. The trial of a former businessman, Felicien Kabuga, suspected of being one of the masterminds behind the genocide in Rwanda, will start on September 29, a court has ruled. The 87-year-old, who was detained in France two years ago after escaping arrest for more than two decades, appeared at a court in The Hague for a pre-trial hearing. In the 1990s, Kabuga was president of the radio station, Radio Television, which broadcast calls for the killing of Tutsis. He stands accused of genocide, incitement to commit genocide, and crimes against humanity. The 1994 genocide in Rwanda led to the killing of 800,000 Tutsis and thousands of moderate Hutus. In sports, Nigeria's Falconets overturned a goal deficit to thrash Canada 3-1 in their last Group C game at the FIFA Under-20 Women's World Cup early Thursday, securing the maximum points in the group stage. The win places Nigeria at the top of the group, having beaten France and South Korea by a lone goal each in their previous games. The team scored five goals and conceded one in the group stage and will play Group D runners-up, the Netherlands, in the quarterfinals on Monday. That's it on the newsroom at this time. Join us again for more updates. Thank you for watching.